This is going to be a somewhat different video. Since the roof of my house needed an overhaul, the studio in the attic wasn't available and all gear was stored away. Therefore, a rather different studio. Next week will be like the old days again. As a follow-up to my video, my favorite rock music, this time a list of classical albums I like to play. And again, not necessarily demo tracks, but rather music I enjoy. I of course won't mention albums that are of lo-fi quality, but again the music comes first and then the sound quality. Let's start off. Arthur and Lucas Jussen are two Dutch brothers, aged 25 and 28. Already at the age of 10 and 13, they performed Mozart's Concerto for Two Pianos, KV365, at the Amsterdam Concertgebouw with the Radio Chamber Philharmonic, directed by Jaap van Zweden. Van Zweden currently conducts the New York Philharmonic, by the way. The two brothers lived and studied with Maria João Pires. They also performed with Ricardo Castro and Lang Lang. Their recently released The Russian Album contains works for two pianos by Shostakovich, Rachmaninov, Stravinsky and Arensky and became one of my favorites immediately. I love the grand piano, in this case even too, for the broad range of percussive and expressive sounds. And this album shows these qualities as no other. It's available on both Cobus at 96 kHz and on Tidal at MQA 96 kHz. I love the works of both Fazil Sai and Frédéric Chopin, as I have mentioned in earlier videos. I learned of Sai through his Beethoven sonatas that are played in a way that touches me and recorded in a way I love. Nocturnes are night music, the name stems from the Christian night prayer. I wonder if my neighbors would appreciate it if I would play Opus 15 number no. 4 in F at concert loudness, but still the nocturnes are great to dream away on. Especially Saturday mornings are great when accompanied by a croissant and an espresso. The piano is recorded as if it is placed in a large room rather than in a concert hall, which is of course a matter of preference. Since I have made music myself when my hands would still allow that, I've heard more grand piano in that setting than in the distance of the concert hall setting. It fits the soundtrack of my life. In the Netherlands, the Matthäus Passion, the St. Matthew Passion in English, is far more popular than elsewhere. All over the country there are performances at Good Friday, the Friday before Easter, since it tells the suffering, also called Passion, and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The latter version of the work uses two choirs, a string section and a continua consisting of at least violin group 1 and 2, viola, gamba and organ. The woodwinds are two traversos, oboes and oboes da more for each choir, and in addition for choir 1, two oboes da caccia. A countertenor sings the part of the evangelist. The most popular area is number 39, Erbarme dich, meaning have mercy. Tom Koopman is seen as one of the specialists concerning the Matthew Passion. The Amsterdam Baroque Orchestra is not a full-time ensemble, but despite that, very well known and popular. Well-recorded works like this can sound very nice, but if something's wrong in your setup, voices can become harsh. The recording engineer was Adrian Versteiner, that also was responsible for recording much of Herman van Veen's earlier work. From Johann Sebastian Bach to Dietrich Buxtehude is only a small step. Bach admired him so much that he walked a few hundred kilometers to hear Buxtehude play organ. The secret cantatas were especially written for the Abendmusik concerts in Lübeck. So they were not liturgical. Konrad Junghammer is a lutenist. He founded Cantus Köln in 1987 to pay more attention to the baroque choral works like the sacred cantatas on this album. 
The album is available from both Tidal and Caboose at CD quality, and like with the Matthew Passion, voices need good playback equipment. I had never heard of the bohemian composer Johann Baptiste van Hal when I accidentally came across these concertos. By the way, this name is also written as Van Hal and Van Hal. He apparently was well respected by Mozart, Haydn and Beethoven. The same goes for Budapest-born Erden Ratsch. He started to play the double bass at the age of nine and studied at the St. Stephen Music Conservatory in Budapest, Hungary. At the age of 20, he moved to Vienna, where he joined the double bass group of the Vienna State Opera Orchestra, and also became double bass soloist with the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. If you, like me, think of double bass as a dark brown instrument that only provides low frequency bass to, for an orchestra, listen to this album. Raj lets the bass sing like I only know from the best cello players. This Deutsche Grammophon album is also available on Tidal and Cobus at CD quality. And now for something completely different. This album falls in the category Ear Candy. It's a nice collection of dances from operas, as the name of the album already suggests. The pieces are somewhat filmic, almost bombastic from time to time. The album is slightly bass heavy, which accentuates that even more. It's my guilty pleasure, but if you don't like it, I understand. The Japanese conductor Eiji Oe needs no further introduction, I presume. He directed the Minnesota Orchestra for seven years, in which time he recorded 20 albums with reference recordings, like this one. I had my SACD copy ripped, so I listened to the DSD64 version, but versions in CD quality are available on both Cobus and Tidal. At the age of 19, the Dutch violinist Janine Janssen debuted with the Amsterdam Concertgebouw Orchestra. Now at the age of 43, she is world famous and has played four Stradivari, subsequently the 1727 Barère, the 1727 Baron Deurbroek, the 1707 Antonio Stradivari Rivas Baron Goodman and currently the 1715 Stradivari Road Duke of Cambridge. All on loan of course, but it is clear proof of her status as a violinist. On this album, amongst others, Act 3 from The Swan Lake, the main theme from Schindler's List and Ravel's Zigan. This Dekha recording sounds great and is available from Tidal and Cobus at CD quality. And now I mentioned Janine Janssen. I must also mention the music she played for the Dutch movie Suskind. It's about how the Nazis manipulated the Jewish Council of Amsterdam to have them organize the deportation of Jews in an orderly fashion to so-called labor camps. Walter Suskind managed to get young kids to disappear. My daughter played the role of Hannah Suskind, his wife, and that's perhaps why this music makes me so emotional. Seeing your daughter in a concentration camp is confronting, even if you know it's just a movie. Anyway, listen to the fantastic interpretation by Janine Janssen. You find it on both Tidal and Cobus at CD quality. The movie can be found on YouTube as well. One problem with composers that have their name originally written in non-Roman characters is that there are several Roman versions used all over the world. For instance Shostakovich and Shostakovich while I use Shostakovich, which makes searching for this composer not always easy. But he is worth finding, for his grotesque Russian style works are pure gems. The Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, perhaps aided by the fantastic acoustics of the Concertgebouw, is considered to be amongst the top orchestras in the world. The Amsterdam-born conductor Bernard Heitink started conducting directly after the Second World War and already two years later, he substituted Giolini and became the first conductor of the Concertgebouw Orchestra in 1959. 
He held this function until 1999, after which he became honorary conductor. This DECA recording is from 1981 and is available on CD only. Rune found this album for me. I played other string quartets and the radio function of Rune picked this album up from Cobus. I know nothing about the artist and Rune didn't help me here either. It did tell me, however, that the six quartets were published in 1787 and are dedicated to the King of Prussia, Friedrich Wilhelm II. I love string quartets and quintets since they bring you close to the instrument. When played well they sound amazing, whether it's in these works or in Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles. And they sound very well in this album that it is available in 96 kHz on Cobus and in CD quality on Tidal. The Ruisdael Quartet was formed in 1996 when all members were studying at the Royal Conservatory in The Hague. This album was recorded 10 years later. According to their website, they were inspired by the famous Dutch painter Jacob van Ruisdael. The quartet has allegedly been renowned for its intensive playing and nuanced sound palette. And I agree on both musicality and sound quality. The music is not background chamber music, but rather true concerto-like performances. And I love it. On the album are works by Bruckner, Britten, Puccini, Grieg, Rachmaninoff, Weben and Schoenberg. The album is available on Tidal and Cobus and can be ordered via their website. Alexander Nevsky and the Lieutenant Kijis suite are considered to be Prokofiev's most brilliant work by many. Lieutenant Kije was originally written as a film score for a movie with the same name. It was his first commission. He adapted it into the five movement Lieutenant Kije suite, which was first performed in 1934. Four years later, he collaborated with the film director Eisenstein to create his score for the film Alexander Nevsky. This was later adapted into a grand cantata for mezzo-soprano, orchestra and chorus. Both works can be found on this album, performed by the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, directed by André Prévin. I think both need no further introduction. Widely available online, on CD only, at a low price. I also own a DSD-128 version by the Utah Symphony, directed by Cherry Fisher, that is musically quite different, even more dramatic and slightly slow, but also good sounding. Cobus has the 192 kHz version online, Tidal only the 44.1 kHz version. I use the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier that powers the Audiophysic Scorpio loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cables. The DA converter was a Denafrips Terminator Plus connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM balanced interlinks. It got its input signal over I2S from the Denafrips Gaia over an HDMI cable while Two professional 75 ohm video BNC cables were used to clock the Gaia from the Terminator Plus. The streamer is the Aurelic Ares G2, connected to the Gaia over AudioQuest Diamond USB A to B cable. The Ares G2 is connected to the network over the Network Acoustics Eno streaming system and the SOTM SNH 10G switch. After the switch the network is built up as I described in my video about my reference setup November 2020. Reading back my list, I noticed Dutch musicians appear quite often. This was not intentionally. I simply asked Rune to show me my favourite classical albums and this was harvested. I don't know if it had to do with Dutch classical musicians being overly popular as they are with dance music or that it's just a bubble I live in. And let me stress again that the music comes first, followed by the sound quality. I mentioned where reproduction can be more critical. 
on the set of one variant I described earlier there was not a single album that didn't sound satisfactory. Which brings us to the end of this show. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It's much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.